Jeremy as Cook here. I use the Arduino Nano in a ton of projects, and in this video, I'm going to be showing off a basic and very compact setup of one. All these projects use kind of the same sort of basic Arduino Nano setup. With four dip switches pulled to ground, this allows me to use a input pull-up and not use any sort of external resistors. You can see kind of the electro layout out, out here. So we've got the four dip switches on the top, the, uh, the wire going to ground, and then the CR2032 batteries with a switch on it. This is all built into a built-in holder, which is nice. And then you got all these inputs and outputs to play with. This can all be packaged up nicely with some shrink wraps, making for a nice package you could, you could just throw into any sort of embedded project that needs just a few I.O. on it. So to start out with, you've got to obviously solder on the dip switches. You can curve the things over to make them stay before they get soldered on. And then on the top, you just weave some wire through the top and then put a whole big blob of solder on there. That gets clipped off and soldered in as well. You'll have to, pardon my soldering technique, I know it's not the best, but it does, it does hold. And there's a holder there that for the batteries produces six volts, which is really nice, really convenient. It just goes into the voltage input. And you can see it all there. It lines up nicely on the, on the Arduino Nano size-wise. So there's the voltage in. Flip it on, flip it off. It's like going to be external power for whatever I decide to put on later, or so, so I was thinking. And then you got the input or, or output, whatever it is. And then the, the ground is the... the green wire, of course. Got to fix it to that big blob of solder for everything. Pretty convenient to have there. It'd be nice to have a big vat of five volt outputs as well. Then you just slide the shrink wrap on and then heat it up. Nice to see it just melt into place or shrink into place as it, as it were. Looks pretty good. You turn it on, blinks around a little bit. Then you got a nice setup that can bed in nearly anything. It's a nice enclosure I put it in just for now. I wanted this to do something at least a little bit interesting. So this is the code inside of it. You've got the standard dip switches, the standard input pull-ups. That's a very good technique. The only thing you gotta worry about is that instead of it being, when it turns on, it's actually low because it's normally high, but it keeps them from floating without any sort of external resistors. Quite a bit of this code is recycled from my light graffiti project I referenced earlier. You can see that in the suggested videos if you want to check that out. And there's two options here. One puts some random lights out and then one puts a red and red and blue light out. All that'll be going through this LED light. I would say LED lights, but actually only one lit up for some reason. I decided to add a PIR sensor to make it react to movement. One of the disadvantage of the setup that you can see here is, is that if you do have to make changes within the heat shrink, Obviously, you've got to rip it off. You could put it back on, but it's just kind of something to think about. Not something you want to change all the time. So with a bit of heat shrink and hot glue, it was all back, all back in place and ready to react to my hand. You can see it there just blinking away randomly. And it reacts to my hand there, blinking away red and blue. Now, it did it that one time, but for the most part, it doesn't react very well when it went under that clear plastic. I guess that interferes with the infrared signal somehow, but it works pretty well with it off. And the point of this project is more to show off my standard Arduino setup. I thought this lighting fixture was kind of cool enough to show off at least. So I'm gonna switch around the dip switches here and you can see it switches back to random lighting. So I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, or even consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.